Hello and welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be looking at the Season Pass for Battletech. Now, there's a couple of things that I saw here that I thought were kind of interesting, as well as there's some mild concerns I have about the pricing, and I'm a little bit disappointed in their pricing options that they've chosen here. So, one thing I want to point out first is the thing that caught my eye the most. This is the Season Pass. This is what's offered within it. It says right there that it's plainly worth $60 worth of expansions. Now, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, and there's also a roadmap of when they did the 1.2 update in September, or that the 1.2 epito update, excuse me, hit in September. And then we got the upcoming update of 1.3 Flashpoint in uh, sometime this winter. And they did release the release date, which we'll get over to, to just a second in November. Um, but then they also forecast another expansion coming up, Urban Warfare. Now, at first, I'm pretty excited when I see this, and I still kind of am because it introduces quite a few things. Most notably, it'll introduce a sort of um, urban environment combat, and it'll also introduce more mechs. However, they don't really go into details about what else it'll do besides just that. So, one of my worries is that um, the urban warfare thing will just be mechs, just like the Flashpoint thing. Like, uh, we don't see any attention drawn towards, perhaps, you know... Now, I don't really see in this one the need for naval craft, but in Flashpoint, you know, it could have had more amphibious craft or you know, patrol boats of that nature due to the fact that it has an increased uh, amount of water on the map due to its tropics. Um, for urban warfare, you'd expect and you would hope to see an addition of ground vehicles, perhaps even fortifications, as well as infantry for garrison structures, and infantry as a mechanic as a whole, and also jump jet infantry could be seen appearance in the urban warfare expansion. It just makes sense. Um, now, they're just going to do mechs that's Kind of, you know, a bit of a letdown, lack of innovation, not really, you know, inspiring anything new into the uh, game. So if you're kind of, you know, bored, one of my fears is the fact that, you know, people are getting a little bit, you know, bored with the game. Besides the Rogue Tech mod, which, you know, rehashes the game. And these expansions will no doubt revitalize them to some degree. However, in terms of combat, I can't think of much else that will be introduced that will really flesh out the game play, as in the core combat mechanics. We will not see a whole different sort of variety on how, you know, mechs could feel like a truly dominant force on the battlefield. Mechs just feel like your standard everyday infantry. Because there's occasionally some trucks and tanks here and there, but they're mostly just mechs you fight. So it kind of takes away that, you know, scale and scope. It's one of the huge failings of the MechWarrior Online game. The fact that PvP-only MechWarrior games, I think, are a bad idea on paper. Uh, and, you know, a bad idea in practice at the moment. Um, it really takes away what makes a mech a mech. And in the Battletech universe, it's always been sort of that combined arms mentality. Now, you'll still have mech duels, you'll still have, you know, lance-on-lance -lance combat, but it emphasizes how cool it is when it happens, you know, when it does happen. It's epic. You have mechs clashing on mechs. That's fucking cool. But in a lot of engagements, you'd see mechs clash with, you know, armored vehicles or infantry because you're fighting these massive interstellar powers that control massive amounts of space, planets, and population sizes or centers, which, you know, naturally, most of them don't actually qualify to be a mech warrior. In fact, most of them turn out to be tank jockeys, infantry, uh, boot boys, uh, you know, chopper guys, and fucking aerospace jockeys. Poor fucking aerospace jockeys. You know what? I really wouldn't envy that. But either or, my concern here also stems from the fact that the expansions are going to be $20 a pop. Now, at first you're like, eh, what's the big deal with that? Well, you see, they've scheduled three expansions that we know about for the season pass. The season pass totals at $50. Or I'm rounding up even though it has the cents there just to make it easier. Um, $50, that's 20 bucks. so you save about $10 if there's three expansions, because 3 times 20 is 60 so you'll save ten dollars if you buy the season pass. Now it's you know if you're if you're into BattleTech like me, yeah, you'll probably like it. I'm I'm I don't see any reason why you won't. Um, it's a bit steep, and I'm a little bit upset about that. But my biggest fear is the fact that it it turns away people. The biggest thing I always see with a paradox game is how many people turn away just from the sheer price value when you see all the expansions tallied up side by side. And on top of that, they don't offer that much unique variety. Even uh, to parody uh, another franchise, the Total War franchise, Total War Warhammer recently announced its pirate DLC with the Vampires of the Coast. And it's lackluster at best. It just adds one measly faction and not really anything 
other than that, besides some occasionally unique units and a lot of reskins of other units that already exist. It's, it's not in t particularly inspiring except for the campaign mechanics. However, in this instance, we see some additional campaign mechanics, such as the multiple missions, as well as, you know, working with other lances of mercenary companies, but we don't see anything, you know, really defining, really pulling that, really changing the core mechanics or the gameplay. Uh, and that's not a, I'm not saying we need to change the core mechanics, I'm sorry, I mean the battle mechanics. We need to see more additional things, in my opinion. Now, this is highly subjective here, but I think the addition of more ground vehicle variations, because there are a lot more vehicle types than there are listed, Rogue Tech does a good job of pulling out more ground vehicles, but I think the addition of infantry could really see the, env uh, excuse me, the urban environment take on its own whole sort of new spectrum. The introduction of infantry using fortified structures or jump jet infantry as well to hop from building to building could see tactics greatly changed. Uh, and you could see this whole extra layer of depth. Not to mention the introduction of helicopters and aerospace fighter support could see the battlefield change as a whole and take on its really whole new life of its own. The core mechanics of Battletech as a game and mech on mech combat is phenomenal. And I think it would highlight that to introduce other uh, mechanics. Like in the tabletop warfare game um, of Battletech, you have tanks, you have planes, you have helicopters, you have space battles happening at the same time if you want to. I wouldn't recommend it, that's way too hard to keep tabs on. But uh, you have uh, infantry, you know, crawling through fucking buildings, and you've got all sorts of stuff, and you got a naval battle on the coast, you have an underwater battle for an underwater city, like Atlantis-like, going on with combat, underwater combat trains firing like fucking torpedoes at things, with submarines and stuff. It's, it's insane. Battletech is a Ex exceptionally good universe. It's got it's got its flaws here and there, and but as a mech game goes in terms of strategy, it's very interesting. My huge uh, concern here is you have sixty dollars worth of DLC, and if you do buy it in a bundle, you'll save about ten, so that's about fifty. The base game costs forty. The DLC already within one year outshines the base game. I'm already opposed to DLC outshining uh, a base game in price. Uh, as is, because I think that means you have to, you really have to basically create another game worth of content. And my fear here is that it doesn't really bring a lot of variation or a lot of new stuff to the, you know, the table to really entice a lot of people. Now, for myself and for a couple others, uh, we're already kind of like, yeah, no, it's got interesting. It's disappointment of the price, you know, but it's not a huge deal. But I've already seen countless people already turn away from it, um, and. By countless, I mean everyone except for myself and one other person <laughs> out of like a good 20, 20 or so people. So, I don't know. Maybe it's just a small control group, but from what I'm seeing, I see this, you know, and I'm going like, oh, that's, that's a bit steep. And there's not a lot added to the game to really branch it up. The one redeeming quality when I was able to uh, talk to other people is that uh, you introduce the Rogue Tech mod. Uh, and I'm like, well, look at what, let's, let's put this on paper, right? The Rogue Tech mod, let's add that to the equation, right? All right, so Rogue Tech adds a whole new level of depth with what the mechanics are. If Battletech or Hairbrain Schemes adds measly just one or two here and there, or a couple mechs here and there, the Rogue Tech team will go fucking nuts. They'll go absolutely crazy. That'll that'll quadruple the amount of stuff that will be in the game. No, that's, that's a lie. That'll... I, there's not even a number. These crazy bastards add so much stuff into this game. It's actually spectacular. It's like it's like watching what happened to Skyrim while not being a huge fan of Skyrim and being like, damn, I wish I'd see that happen to some game that I was really into. And here we have Battletech and Rogue Techs happening, which is why I've been sitting on it, not really playing it too much because I'm waiting for the expansion to come out plus the, uh, plus the mod update because it's just so good. Rogue Tech is so good. It is worth it. Just on that fa that uh, selling point alone, if you if you're into these sort of uh, turn-based tactical RPG sort of strategy games, um, other than that, I don't have a lot of other concerns other than the price point. I think that's a, I think that's steep. I think it's really steep, and I'm really concerned that it's you know not gonna, it's gonna turn a lot of people away from the fandom and a lot of people away from the idea of the game because the game is at itself it's pretty good. The story is pretty poorly written and doesn't really emphasize it. it it carries a lot of the bad qualities of the older Battletech books and a lot of the Battletech literature. And since that, some of it's really bad. Uh, like, uh, what was it? The one where the fucking, they find space chicken alien things. That was, that wasn't canon. But, you know, you get the point. 
it, it takes away from the universe. It's it's a bit it's a bit upsetting, but it's not that it's not the end of the world. And with modability into play, you know, you can fix that out, bam. And this new quest chain system, I think, will be fucking amazing. I think that'll honestly benefit the game more than anything else. But again, not to reiterate too much, and you know, bang on the door too much. Uh, but that price point is a bit of a concern, and the lack of introduction of new mechanics is also a colossal concern. Another suggestion that I've seen quite pop up quite frequently, and I don't think would be the best possible, but it's an option, I suppose. I mean, fuck, you could probably just uh, screen share with another software, but I see a lot of people suggesting cooperative functions. Not to dilly too much on the hypotheticals, I'm just sort of speculating here quite a bit into the future of what might be. Now, Flashpoint launches November 27th, so we'll be doing that on this channel uh, as well. As soon on day launch, we'll play it for quite a bit, probably stream it, uh, you know, look, play through it together, sort of get a feel for it. I'll be playing the game right now, a little bit recently, just to re revitalize my knowledge into the game, so I jump in and be like, ah, yes, I know how to play the game, because I played nothing but Rogue Tech, and let me tell you, Rogue Tech adds a extra plethora of rules for morale, you know, overheating, armor chassis everything everything and anything you can think of in in terms of the battletech roleplay like a time of war or the you know total warfare book or all the books it really feels like they're just kind of adding all that shit it adds a huge bit not only at the rest of the fucking sphere and then some into the clan space as well as a timeline but either, not to dilly dally too much it's fundamentally a different game <laughs> at its core as it stands now or at its core I mean, it's technically the same but eh, you get the point but I think that'll conclude my sort of thoughts on this upcoming expansion. Until we see more, so 27th, well, hopefully, hopefully I'll be proven wrong about the price value, as in it'll be totally worth it. Um, I think Rogue Tech will be the breaker on that. I think Rogue Tech will be the thing that makes it worth it. But uh, from people, you know, that don't, that are the casuals that don't mod it, I don't know if they'll come back. I, that's that's my concern because I'd like to see it grow. I'd like to see the BattleTech game. And I'd like to see other games grow too, but I'd like to see this one grow because it's been, you know, kind of dead. <laughs> the Battletech franchise. And MechWarrior Online has not helped that in any way. MechWarrior Living Legends is a really good idea, but also is pretty buggy. But uh, you can see the fandom wants to be, and hopefully we'll have a good excuse to be. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, you have yourself a great day, and uh, I'll see you then. Toodaloos.